Hey, I'm Richard Socher. I'm the CEO and founder of U.com, a new search engine, and also the founder of AIX Ventures. You know, a lot of people thought it was crazy because we started about two years ago. Um, and at the time, I got a lot of feedback uh, from friends and investors and, and others saying, it's kind of crazy. Google is unbeatable. Um, they have all the things, all the AI, everything. Uh, it's an impossible task. Since uh, last year, things have started to shift. Uh, last year, we've seen three waves. People saying Reddit, you know, they have to add site call in Reddit to every one of the Google queries to see real authentic behavior and, and content on the internet. Then uh, New York Times and others talked about how TikTok is becoming the new uh, Google for Gen Z. And the third wave was people saying ChatGPT is the Google killer. And it's clear that none of those three by themselves could actually compete as your default search engine. But it is also clear that people are looking for an alternative and U.com offers all three of those. There's a Reddit app, there's a TikTok app, and now we've just launched a chat interface called UChat, which tackles one of the most immediate and pressing issues of large language models uh, like ChatGPT, which is they don't usually incorporate citations and recent news. So UChat actually has the same capabilities and power as uh, a large language model like ChatGPT, but also has access to the internet and is part of a search engine. And so it's starting to be already more factual more often, but there's also, it's just a V1. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in it and a lot of growth from it, uh, but we're gonna make it better. And in the next few weeks, actually, we're gonna wow people, I think, quite a bit uh, with a new kind of large language model that's going to be much, much more useful than anything we've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. Google has indeed been, become quite the monopoly. Uh, because of that, they didn't have to really innovate uh, for the last couple of almost decade uh, plus uh, years. Uh, and because of that, they kept wanting to just make more revenue each quarter. Of course, Wall Street wants to see more, more revenue, more profits. And unfortunately, what that meant is instead of having three ads, they just said, let's innovate and have four ads, and then five ads, and now sometimes six ads. And then after the ads come SEO'd microsites, where you, know, you basically have just second order effects of ads. Uh, microsites trying to funnel your traffic from Google into some other advertisement. And at some point, people got a little bit fed up and said, like, this isn't actually working that well anymore, anymore for me. There hasn't been that much innovation. And on top of that, there's like, all this privacy innovation, also just to squeeze out a little bit more for ads, so, so these targeted advertisements are also becoming an issue. People find it creepy, you know, they have a conversation, they search for something private, and they're on some private websites, medical sites, other kind of content that you wanna keep private, and it turns out Google's also there with Google tracking pixels. So people are getting fed up with that. You know, there are alternatives, there are private ads uh, that you could have um, and that other uh, sort of more niche search engines have um, and that we may have to explore in the future too. So we're trying to innovate also on the business model by opening up the U.com platform. When Imagine the iPhone uh, when it came out and it only allowed apps from Apple. It would have probably still been a good phone, probably better than your Nokia phone, but it would never have YouTube, it would never have TikTok, Instagram, Zoom calls, any of that. That's essentially what Google is doing to search, where it's all Google's content, only Google is making money on that first page. But other companies, other organizations, other developers, people have a lot to offer and they could contribute to that new search engine that is also connected to all the recent AI capabilities through a chat interface. And I think that will be a much more exciting future, more innovative, and people ultimately get more done and have a better experience, be more well-informed, and uh, be more productive overall. Yeah, it's a great question. So we currently are not yet making money. Uh, when you're growing like this, you, you're going to think about it. And we're, we're actually thinking about turning private ads on this quarter. And I'll define what that means in a second. But now we're growing like this. So the regime changes a little bit and you're focused more on continuing to grow. Uh, but the idea is basically to have two things. One, some innovation on these apps. So if you have an app that just does something for you, you buy something on the app, then you can monetize directly that search app. Think about you write, for instance, which is an essay writer. A lot of folks are already paying for it. They can say, I want to write a ton of different essays all the time. I want this 
AI to have you know very easy and very easy interface for me to just generate text. If you do that enough, the models are big enough, they're expensive enough, uh, you can pay for it. So we're going to try to innovate as much as we can on that. If we don't succeed um, in monetizing these apps in this platform and apps like app platform and search, uh, then we may have to turn on private ads to similar to DuckDuckGo, for instance, and those private ads will only depend on your search query, not on the user. So if you happen to search for air conditioner, you may see an air conditioner ad on that page. Uh, but very importantly, these are not targeted ads. There's no tracking pixels on the rest of the internet to try to make them a little bit better. And to be honest, I think it's partially uh, you know, something that has worked very well for DuckDuckGo for many years. Uh, and from the search query, you get about 80% of the signal in terms of what someone wants to buy, right? And so I think that's enough. So Google never promised to have good privacy in their marketing materials. And if they had promised a lot of good privacy and then not deliver, I think you lose a lot of trust. So part of me actually doing this very interview here is to promise that very publicly so that eventually in the future, no shareholders could say, well, let's just drop that. I'm like, we would lose a lot of trust in our brand. Uh, and so, so that's, that's part of it. And then the main reason Google makes more money in DuckDuckGo is they have a lot more users than DuckDuckGo. Um, DuckDuckGo is still a uh, you know, viable company. That is actually uh, yeah, a good way to describe it. So the idea of the App Store is that any developer can contribute an app. So if you, for instance, are Expedia and you help people find flights, you could come to you.com and have an Expedia app. And so if someone is searching for how to book a flight, then the Expedia app could come up, and then you just book the flight right there. Uh, that's, that's one of the goals. Uh, and I think it's very important that when you have this open app platform that users also have control. So users can actually say, I want to pin this app, I want to see it all the time in my pinned app uh, tab, or I want to see it more often because I just generally like this new source more than this other new source. No no uh, feedback, or I want to see it less often, or I never want to see this app ever again. You know, there are a lot of very passionate folks. Some people love TikTok, some people hate TikTok, some people love Reddit, some people hate Reddit. So you actually have control over your information diet as a user by selecting which apps you'd more, want to see more often or never, and vice versa. It can be both completely new capabilities and can be existing capabilities. Being on that first page is extremely convenient for users. So we never want to fight convenience. But when you have a lot of things on that first page, and you know, estimates vary, but somewhere between 40 to 60% of all Google queries are now zero clicks, meaning people don't leave the Google ecosystem anymore. They may go to YouTube, they may go to People Also Ask, they may go to Google Maps, uh, and they see the snippet, and they don't go to the actual websites anymore. And if that's the reality and it's a convenient future for users, you don't want to fight convenience. It doesn't usually end well for consumer companies. So then if you want to incorporate that convenience but make it equitable and fair for the rest of the internet and the rest of companies, uh, then you have to let them participate on that first page but also keep the user in control. So that's sort of what we're trying to do with this App Store. And then, of course, what that App Store also enables us to do is to actually have a lot more capabilities and be able to move incredibly quickly. Just last year, we were the first search engine to have a Reddit app. Um, and that users, again, can select, I want to see more Reddit. We are the first search engine to have a TikTok app. We are the first search engine to have an AI writing assistant app. We are the first search engine that has a stable diffusion app, we call it You Imagine, where you can just generate an image that doesn't exist. You want to find a copyright-free image or something, you just generate it right there. And it, it happens. And so all of these different capabilities, programming capabilities to an AI that will write code for you or translate from Python into Java or whatever, all of these capabilities are already on this open platform. And we just opened it for the rest of the world in December as well. And we're now getting a ton of really interesting app submissions for it that we're working to incorporate. U.com is completely free. But there are apps that you could uh, you could use if you want to use them a lot. Then you may have to pay for like a subscription for that particular app. So, okay. for instance, you write is the first one where you, if you want to generate tons of essays or blog posts 
or tweets or messages or whatever, at some point you're going to have to pay. The latest, so last year we were already growing, but the latest driver of growth is uChat. It's a new chat capability that has capabilities similar to ChatGPT, but also can pull in content from the internet, surf the web, and then summarize that content for you, and, uh, and then give you also a citation for you know, where that information was found. And this is something that we're still, you know, it's very new, it's a very new kind of capability. Uh, we want to bring that to user, make it accessible worldwide. Uh, what we're finding is that uh, there's some places where it's incredibly good, and better than any other experience out there, and there's still some experiences where it doesn't work that well yet. And one thing that's clear is like whenever it gives you a few citations for each of the main facts, it's very trustworthy, it's very good, and, and uh, very useful. When it doesn't give you any citations, then you have to trust the rest of the web, exper web search experience on you.com a little bit more, which is not always a bad thing. You might want to ask it, write me a poem about how aliens invaded you know, Berlin in 2030. There is no citation needed, and it's obviously like you're asking the model to hallucinate. The problem, unfortunately, doesn't always know when you're trying to jam and brainstorm on something or when you, know, you want to just find a real fact. So we're, we're still working on that and maybe adding like confidence meters uh, and things like that. If there are three citations, our confidence can be quite high that the model is, is very factual. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, you, you bring up a very good point there. With a search engine, I expect it to be 100%. At some, somewhere on the site, you expect to be able to do and find what you're looking for. But that site has 10 links. And it took a long time to people to not trust every one of those first 10 links, let alone the next thousand. So search engines, too, send you to a lot of wrong information, right? And there's a lot of issues uh, with factual correctness on the internet, um, which also uh, can be accessed through a search engine. So I would actually um, push back a little bit on saying I can trust the search engine 100% in terms of everything it will always send me to is going to be perfect for what I'm trying to do. I think that's also not the case. But I think for chat, because there's only one answer, the bar is a lot higher to make that one answer absolutely perfect because there's no backup, which is also partially a design question that we're currently working on. You know, I've, I've worked a lot in uh, speech recognition and natural language processing for many years as, uh, you know, as a researcher. And as much as I love it, uh, I don't think a pure voice or pure text interface is always the right thing. Um, concretely, if I ask, like, what's the weather going to be? I don't want to have a text interface or a voice interface saying tomorrow at 3 p.m. there's 30% of, like, of chance of rain or you know, 10 knots an hour winds and, and blah, blah, blah. And then for 4 p.m. it's that. And for 5 p.m. it's that. I just want to see a quick picture of what it is. Same with restaurants, right? If I ask, like, what are some nice restaurants um, that I could go on right now? I don't want to get a long textual description of, there are 500 restaurants near you. The first one is 0.1 miles away. It has three stars, blah, 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 right? Like, you just want to see a picture with some nice, you know, like uh, description of the food, the star rating, the distance in miles, and you just want to be able to quickly scan that. And so we think the future is going to be multimodal. Even in a chat interface, um, you can be multimodal. So I can't share the full vision for the super long term because it's a little bit too early, but for now, the goal is to be the best search engine for you, to make you very productive, to help you save time, help you save your privacy, to put you back into control. And the way we're going to do this is with this chat interface and making that the most powerful productivity tool the world has ever seen.